From the Sea Valley Iris Society, would like to invite you to Las Cruces, New Mexico on April 12th through 17th, 2021 for the American Iris Society National Convention, which will be called Iris Enchantment for the Land of Enchantment. Las Cruces is located approximately 50 miles from El Paso International Airport. There will be shuttle service from El Paso International Airport to the hotel, and we hope to re uh, arrange reduced rate transportation on the shuttle. However, if you'd like to enjoy the sights around Las Cruces, car rentals are cheap in El Paso and parking is free at the hotel. Las Cruces is located at 4,000 feet in elevation, so be sure you're able to handle the elevation. And we also have about 350 days a year of sunshine, so you should have good weather. Our convention hotel will be the Hotel Encanto de Las Cruces. The Hotel Encanto is located east of downtown Las Cruces. The Hotel Encanto is Spanish colonial, Mexican colonial style. It's the largest hotel in town with 201 rooms. It was also the location of the 2018 Errol Trek. Hotel Encanto has a large swimming pool. In the month of April when you're here, the days will be warm though the evenings are cool. You should be able to swim, but I certainly can't promise that the girls will be there. Here are some examples of the Spanish Mexican heritage on the inside of the hotel. So Las Cruces is the city of the crosses. How we got our name. There are multiple theories as to how Las Cruces got its name. One theory suggests that sometime during the 18th century, a bishop, a priest, a Mexican army colonel, a captain, four trappers, and four choir boys were attacked near the Rio Grande, and only one a boy survived. Crosses were erected in their honor, and the name El Pueblo de, del Jardín de las Cruces, the city of the, of the Garden of the Crosses, evolved. Other stories, stories say multiple crosses were erected in the area to mark the grave sites of many victims of Apache raids. Still another story is that a group of 40 travelers from Taos, New Mexico, were killed just as they reached Las Cruces. But some people feel that the name is simply Spanish translating for crossing or crossroads. Just southwest of Las Cruces is the town of Old Mesilla. Old Mesilla is an old Mexican village. After the Mexican-American War, Old Mesilla was still part of Mexico and did not become part of the United States until after the Gadsden Purchase. Shortly thereafter, it was a stop on the Butterfield stage from the Midwest to San Francisco. There's a number of interesting restaurants and shops in Old Mesilla. East of Las Cruces and prominent on the skyline are the Oregon Mountains. The Oregon Mountains, you will see them everywhere, and uh, the highest mountain in the Oregon Mountains is Oregon Needle, which is 9,000 feet, towering 5,000 feet over the Mesilla Valley and the city of Las Cruces. We will be visiting six gardens during your tour of Las Cruces. The first garden will be visited on Thursday, April 15, 2021. It's Blue Jay Iris in Vado, New Mexico. Blue Jay Iris moved recently from Nebraska to Southern New Mexico when the Jedlika family in Nebraska retired and their daughter Sherry took over the business and set up shop in Southern New Mexico. Sherry has over 4,000 irises of her own in Blue Jay Iris, and this will be the master garden for the uh, American Iris Society Convention with over 700 different varieties of convention iris. 
We began planting at Blue Jay in August 2019. Here's another picture of the irises just after we planted them on October 21st, 2019. Another picture of the convention planting October 21st, 2019. Here is Blue Jay iris, the convention planting on April 17, 2020. Due to a, a late winter this year, uh, the bloom season is later than it normally is, and there was few blooms at Blue Jay on this date. However, on a normal uh, winter, which we hope we have next year, this should be in full bloom. Here's another picture of Blue Jay iris on April 17, 2020. The second garden that you'll be visiting also on Thursday, April 15, 2021, is Calhoun Flower Farm. Calhoun Flower Farm is a commercial flower farm. They grow flowers and sell bouquets and arrangements in the various stores in the Mesilla Valley. They are also host of a lot of weddings and other, other events. Nadine Calhoun was the grandmother of the uh, girls that now run the farm, and she was a well-known irisarian with the El Paso Iris Society before it folded, and also the Mesilla Valley Iris Society in its early days. We'll be planting here in, in honor of Nadine Calhoun. Here's a picture of, their, of some of their commercial flowers on October 21st, 2019. On August 16, 2019, we did our planting here, and here are a couple of our members just starting to plant the irises. And here's the irises beginning to grow on October 21st, 2019. And here's another picture of October 21st, 2019. Here's a picture of Calhoun Flower Farm in bloom on April 27th, 2020. Here's another picture of Calhoun Flower Farm on April 17th, 2020, with some of the early blooms. On Friday, April 16th, 2021, we'll be visiting the New Mexico State University Fabian Garcia Science Center. The Fabian Garcia Science Center has many of the test gardens of the Environmental Science Department of New Mexico State University. The university generously provided this area for our iris planting here. Here we are unpacking our irises for planting on August 16, 2019. Here's another picture of us planting irises at New Mexico State University on August 16, 2019. In the foreground is Roy Covey, our plant show chair for the convention, as, as well as other workers. And here the university on August 21st, 2019. Here's another picture of the New Mexico State University Fabian Garcia Iris Garden on October 21st, 2019. Here, is, here it is in full bloom on a, April 17, 2020. Here is another picture of the Fabian Garcia New Mexico State University Iris Garden on April 17, 2020. Also on Friday, April 16, 2021, we will be visiting the New Mexico Farm and Ranch Museum. The Farm and Ranch Museum has a lot of historical exhibits as well as many different types of cattle. Admission to the museum will be provided as part of the tour of this garden. The irises will be planted on the two large raised beds at the entrance to the museum. Here we are getting ready to prepare the beds for our planting at the Farm and Ranch Museum. On the left is the director of the museum. On the right is the horticulturist and the three of us in the middle are the workers. 
at Farm and Ranch Museum, the state was more than happy to give us a space to plant irises here, but we would have to do all the work ourselves. The raised beds, the soil was hard and old, so it was going to require us to dig it all out, have new soil trucked in, and put irrigation in. As I mentioned on the previous slide, the soil was hard and packed where we were going to plant the irises at the edge of the raised bed. In most places, the museum went and wet the soil, which made it easiest for us to dig it out. But in certain places, it was hard as a rock. Here I am with a pickaxe trying to soften the soil so we could dig it out. Here we are putting the, the new irrigation lines in. After we finished digging out the old soil and putting the irrigation in, we had fresh soil trucked in from a local quarry, which included compost. The Farm and Ranch Museum was good enough to provide their front loader to bring the soil from where we had it dumped and put it in the beds so we could easily spread it. Now here's our group spreading the soil. Little did I know how dirty the work was that we were doing. Somebody snapped a picture of me after I was done working. I guess I should have worn a mask. We did all the preparation for the iris planting in July of 2019. On August 15th, we were ready to plant. And here are several of our volunteers as we start planting. October 21st, with the new soil, the irises were growing great at the Farm and Ranch Museum. And here's another picture of, the, of one of the two beds on October 21st, 2019. Unfortunately, the Farm and Ranch Museum was closed when the governor, the state of New Mexico, issued a stay-at-home order the latter part of March. Fortunately, the director's wife was the museum photographer, and she was able to take pictures for us. Here are the irises in full bloom on April 14, 2020. Here's another picture of the irises in bloom, April 14, 2020. And again, and again, the irises were growing really great here, and you're really going to enjoy this museum. On Saturday, April 17, 2021, we'll visit Wes and Cynthia Wilson's Iris Inspires Garden. Wes and Cynthia's garden was the premier garden on the 2018 Errol Trek. Wes and Cynthia have 900 irises in their garden, plus approximately 150 Errol breads. In addition to that, there'll be 200 convention irises as well as 600 irises from my Picacho Mountain Iris commercial planting. Here's a picture of the Errol bread planting from the 2018 Errol Trek at Wes and Cynthia Wilson's Iris and Spirus's garden. The irises were in full bloom on April 7th and 8th of 2018. I expect that there'll be less bloom for the convention that'll be a week later in 2021, but there'll still be plenty of arrow breads for you to see. According to the late Perry Dyer, this was the best display of arrow breads he had ever seen. Here's my Picaccio Mountain Iris planting at Wes and Cynthia Wilson's Iris and Spirus Garden. You're looking at the tall bearded plantings. They're probably about 450, 500 tall bearded irises here, both my introductions and many of my seedlings. Also, not in this picture, is the raised beds where my arrow bread introductions and seedlings are. And here's a picture of the convention planting, October 22nd, 2019. Finally, here's a picture of uh, the Wilson's Iris and Spirus Garden convention planting on April 21st, 2020.
The second garden will be visiting on Saturday, April 17, 2021, and the last of our six gardens is Scarlet Ayers Garden on Las Cruces is East Mesa. Scarlet is the convention co-chair, and her garden was another one of the 2018 Errol Trek gardens. Here's a picture of her garden on October 21st, 2019. And here's another picture with the convention plantings on October 21st, 2019. Here's another picture of Scarlet Ayers 2021 convention plantings. This picture was taken on October 21st, 2019. The convention plantings are on the, both sides of a wide grass pathway. April 24th, 2020, the irises are in bloom. And here we are again in Scarlet Air's garden. And we have several pictures from her garden. There's Scarlet in the garden on April 24th. And here's another picture of Scarlet's garden, April 24th, 2020. In August of 2019, when we planted all the gardens, we also hosted the Region 23 Convention in Las Cruces. We invited members of the other clubs of Region 23 to come out and help us plant. Here are a sampling of the workers after our planting, celebrating at La Posta in the Old Messia. While you're in Las Cruces, there'll be many places that you can see that are a short distance from the convention hotel. First and closest, is Dripping Springs in Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument. It's a short and easy hike from Dripping Springs Visitor Center to Dripping Springs, which is about a mile and a half away. Dripping Springs, you will find two ruins, one of the Van Patten Mountain House, which is the older of the two, and the other of the Boyd Sanitarium. Back in the early 20th century, it was thought that the Southwest was the best place to come th to stay if you suffered from tuberculosis, and the Boyd Sanitarium was one of those places. Just be careful if you go on this hike. While it's easy, the visitor center is located at 5,500 feet elevation, and the uh, Dripping Springs itself is at 6,200 feet elevation. Just east of the Oregon Mountains and approximately 30 minutes from the hotel is the White Sands Missile Range. In the early days, it was White Sands Proving Grounds, and many of the early rockets and missiles were tested there. There's a museum just at the entrance to the missile range that's open to the public and it's free. It's open from 8 to 4 on weekdays and 10 to 3 on Saturday. Outside the museum is a missile park displaying a variety of missiles and rockets tested at White Sands. These include everything from the WAC, Corporal, and Loon, which is the U.S. version of the V-1, to a Pershing II and Patriot. More than 50 items are on display. To view some of the missiles and rockets in the missile park, you can use this link. Approximately one hour east of the hotel and east of the White Sands Missile Range is White Sands National Park. White Sands National Park is America's newest national park created in the last year from what was once the White Sands National Monument. White Sands has the largest gypsum white sand dune field in the world, and there are plenty of places to explore there's a boardwalk where you can explore what survives in this harsh environment, and there are plenty of places to walk on top of the dunes. Entrance to the National Park is $15. However, if you're over 62 and have a senior pass, it's free, particularly if you're the driver, then all your passengers are free too. About an hour and a half east of Las Cruces, is in the New Mexico Museum of Space History in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Admission to the museum is free for 
people over 62 years of age. There's three aspects to the museum. There's the museum itself, which is a four-story building. You take the elevator to the top and you walk and see all the exhibits and there's ramps down through each level. There's multiple information on the history of the space program. There's also a planetarium and there's a, a theater. The theater is the only place that there's a fee if you're a senior citizen. Otherwise, if you're not senior citizen, there are fees for all parts of the museum, but it's well worth your trip. An hour northeast of Las Cruces is Spaceport America. Spaceport America is the first commercial spaceport in the country. There's tours available to Spaceport America from Las Cruces for a fee. That's the only way you can visit the spaceport. 45 minutes south of Las Cruces is the War Eagles Air Museum in Santa Teresa, New Mexico. There's a lot of historic aircraft on display here, including some of the early fighter jets. Three to four hours northwest of Las Cruces is the Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument. It was home to the Mogollon people around 1200 AD. They made their home here and built their homes within the rocks. There's plenty of places to walk and see the rooms where they lived. For whatever reason, they only lived here for 20 years before they moved on. A trip to the Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument, you should stop in Silver City, which is uh, the gateway to the Gila Cliffs. Four hours east of Las Cruces is Carlsbad Caverns National Park. This is certainly New Mexico's most famous national park. Carlsbad Caverns is this tremendous underground cavern system. There's multiple rooms that are lit. It's possible to go down in the elevator and, and walk through the caverns or from the uh, museum at the top you can actually walk down to the bottom, which is well worth the trip. So while you're in Las Cruces, like I say, the main feature you're going to see is the Oregon Mountains. I have several pictures of the Oregon Mountains. Uh, this one's at sunrise. Here's another one at sunset. Here's the Oregon Mountains in winter. Here's an Oregon mountain thunderstorm. And here's after a thunderstorm with a rainbow. Thank you all for enjoying this slide show, an invitation to the American Irish Society National Convention in Las Cruces, New Mexico. We hope to see you all here in Las Cruces next spring, April 12th to 17th. Remember, the second century of the American Irish Society begins in Las Cruces, and please enjoy my convention helpers.